Hello everyone, this video is going to cover the concept of patterns in algebra. In particular, we're going to be looking at the classification of number patterns and within that specific classification, we're looking at the subcategory called number sequences. So to do that, we're going to start off with a quick description of what this actually might entail and we see that in the left hand side of this page here. So the description says that number sequences questions involves a certain order of numbers which follow a particular pattern or rule. The numbers following the rule may be consecutive or alternating. Looking for the increase or decrease in value between the numbers may help determine what sort of operation is used. For example, if there is a big leap in numbers, you may think of using multiplication rather than using addition, where the difference in value would be small. More difficult questions could potentially use exponential functions. So having a depth in-depth knowledge of square and cube numbers is actually quite a big advantage. Otherwise, the rule may be a combination of operators. Okay, so now that we've read that, we know that what this question's or this question type is going to revolve around is patterns and numbers. So usually these questions will provide you the beginning or some part of a number sequence. And it's going to be our job to figure out A, what the pattern of the increase or decrease actually is, and then usually B, to predict what uh, number in the sequence will actually be. So to do that, we, we then, these questions always revolve around us figuring out what the actual pattern is. And depending on the question, these can actually be quite difficult because usually they'll just be like three or four numbers and you have to figure out the pattern just using those numbers and there are really no other hints. So the biggest tip for these questions would be to recognize that a lot of the questions use very similar patterns. Now, this isn't always the case because as you can imagine, you can make up any pattern you want in the world and make that a question. But there are some patterns that are just well known and tend to appear a lot in these types of questions. And the biggest one is actually has been mentioned in the description. And those are square and cube numbers. So if you can learn to recognize your square numbers, then just for example, writing a couple here, these numbers, if you spot these numbers in a sequence, you immediately know what the pattern is. It's just squaring your numbers. Or if it's a number very, very similar to these numbers, but it's different by just a small increment, then maybe you square a number and then you add another number or something like that. So square numbers and cube numbers at a lesser extent are both really, really important numbers. So these types of questions actually get easier the more you do them because sometimes you'll do so many that you'll just be like, ah, yes, that's a square number. I know what that is and immediately answer the question. So square numbers and uh, cube numbers are definitely one of the important numbers you'll want to keep in the back of your mind whenever you approach these pattern questions. Now, a lesser obvious one can be what's called a Fibonacci number. And I should actually use a capital F because the Fibonacci is this Italian dude who discovered these numbers. Well, he didn't really discover them, but he kind of brought it into the Western media. And that's kind of how we associate these numbers. And Fibonacci numbers are basically numbers where in a sequence you add two numbers behind to get the third number. And that's a bit of a confusing statement. So let's uh, say in an example. So if we have a sequence of 0, 1, uh, 2, so completely random numbers, the Fibonacci, sorry, this should actually be 0 and 1, the next number in the Fibonacci sequence is always the addition of the two prior numbers. So we've got two numbers in the sequence. So this third number here has to be the addition of the previous two numbers, which just gives us 1. Then the next number here 
would be the addition of these two numbers, which is two. And that just continues on. So the next number would be three, the next number would be five, the next number eight, so on and so forth. And these numbers, just like cube numbers, you can kind of recognize them if you see them a bunch of times, or you can always apply the math. So even if it doesn't start out as zero, maybe if you see three, five, and eight, you can, and then maybe the next number 13, you can then immediately recognize that there is something Fibonacci going on there, and you also recognize the rule. One more thing that I think you see quite commonly are triangular numbers, and these just are numbers that you would see if you stacked up equilateral triangles in a dot. So, for example, if you start out with one dot, the next dot, remember these dots have to be in an equilateral triangle, the next one would have three dots. The next equilateral triangle would be composed out of three, two, then one. So that gives us six dots and that just increases so on and so forth. Two, three, two, and one. So that would be, what is it? I think it's 10. Four plus three, seven plus three is 10, yep. Okay, so those are just one of the very common ones that you'll see, but sometimes the pattern is something completely random. So what, tips I would use in that scenario is actually what's mentioned in the description. You need to look at how the values are changing. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? Then that would tell you if you use addition, multiplication, division or subtraction. But if the increases is going up really, really fast, so the numbers are going from, say, example, 1, 5, 100, 1,000, then you know something funky with multiplication is going on because you can't just add in the, these gigantic numbers. Then, on the other hand, if your number is shrinking extremely uh, fast, then you know some division is going on rather than subtraction. So those would be the kind of things you would try to do whenever you approach these questions. So let's try and apply what we just learned in this kind of example question. So this example question is just going to serve as a kind of way to try and figure out the techniques that we can use in these types of questions. So this question has provided us a bunch of blocks and we want to know how many blocks are used to make in step seven, given that we know how many blocks were used in the first three. So that means that there is some sort of pattern going on. And like we talked about, our job is to figure out what the pattern actually is. So these kind of things, it's kind of easy to draw a table. So we have the steps and the number of blocks. And let's say we have this kind of table here. Step number one, we can clearly see there's only one block. In step number two, um, in this scenario, instead of adding up all of the numbers, I'm actually going to just look at it in each row. So step number two, we can see there's actually nine blocks. And the reason I'm going to do that for this specific question is that we can see that the step number one is present in step number two, and it's just placed on top of whatever's on the bottom. And that kind of pattern has been continued in the bottom and the third pattern as well. So we can make it a bit simpler and see how many blocks are being added per step and use that to figure out the final step. So the third step has one, two, three, four, five blocks and that's being squared. So there will be 25 blocks. Now, do you remember the tips we talked about? Well, one of them was to immediately recognize that square numbers are very, very common in these questions. And hopefully you re recognize that these are in fact square numbers. And it looks like there's actually a pattern within the pattern because one is one squared, nine is three squared and 25 is five squared. So it looks like the numbers are actually going up every odd number. So we can use this information to figure out how many steps are needed for step seven. Step four will have two more, so seven squared, which is equal to 49. Step five, again, going up by two would give us nine squared, which is equal to 81. Let's make this table a bit longer. Step six should have 
uh, two more than before, so 11 squared, which is 121. And finally, our last step should have two more, so 13 squared, 169. Okay, so that shows us how important it is to kind of memorize these uh, square numbers. Not entirely necessary, but if you know them, then that just makes the process so much faster. So now that we know how many blocks are needed per step, the question wants us to figure out how many you need to make the entire thing. And remember, we figured out the pattern just by looking at each row. So to figure out how many you need for step seven actually does require us to add all of these numbers together. So that's the task that we need to do. 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49 plus 81 plus 121 plus 169. The grand total should equal to 455. So the correct answer is going to be option B. Okay, so what we learned here is that it's really important to be able to recognize what the pattern is in the question, which then allows us to figure out the answer. So as long as we figure out the pattern by looking at how the numbers are changing, in this case, it was increasing by odd numbers that were being squared that led us to the correct answer. So that would be the general kind of strategy that we could use to answer these types of questions. Hopefully that was of some help to you and this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you everyone so much for listening.